Look at what the catfish dragged in. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. There's something different. Hey, hello. How do you do? Shady Directs here. So I'm guessing you intellectuals have seen the new trailer to Disney's live action version of The Little Mermaid. There's a lot of buzz around this trailer and I've been looking to try new topics on the channel, so I thought I'd give this a whirl. There are two big complaints people tend to have when looking at this trailer. First of all, everything looks really dark despite the fact that the source material movie is traditionally seen as a colorful and fun experience. This is a critique I don't agree with. Ariel is obviously in the grotto where she sings part of your world, which even in the original was a darkly lit scene. Symbolically, the whole point a part of your world is that Ariel feels trapped in a world she doesn't want to be in. The only light source coming from above represents hope and want. Like the sunlight beaming down into her grotto, she can see the surface world and get a taste of it, but she can never reach it despite how much it offers. Ergo, the scene would actually be made worse if it was bright and colorful, as it would lose its symbolism much like Aladdin did when it decided to make its lamp beautiful and pristine. And this holds true for every other scene in the trailer. They were all more darker moments in the original movie and in said movie were lit that way for a reason. Now, if this was Under the Sea, a scene that's supposed to represent the wonders of the ocean and how beautiful it could be, then yeah, people would have a valid complaint. But of course, you didn't click on this video to hear about the darkness of the ocean. You want to know what I think about the darkness of the protagonist. Will I, an online personality, side with you and validate your opinion, or will while I give you another video to type angry comments in. Am I on your side or, or the enemies? And this, dear viewer, is why I hate the culture war. For those of you who don't know what the culture war is, it's a complicated subject, but long story short, people use cultural values to further their own personal and or political beliefs in hopes of normalizing them. But because we're all human, we disagree on exactly what beliefs should be pushed forward, and that affects our views on culture as well. Rather than praising or critiquing a piece of media only on how it stands as a work of art, people often do so based on whether or not it pushes the correct message. Normally, looking at the message is only supposed to be a part of reviewing media. The modern culture war, while containing many factions, mainly involves self-identified progressive and inclusive activists versus moderates and conservatives. There has always, and probably will always, be a culture war in society, so I can't act like our generation is special or anything, but man does it feel like it is unnecessarily everywhere nowadays. I'm a critic, a reviewer. I talk about media all the time and I do it online. You all know this, it's why you click on most of my videos. What you might not know is that today, you can't walk five feet in modern media without stubbing your toe on something involved in the culture war. You can't like this without being left-leaning. You can't dislike that without being right-leaning. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know what side I take when it comes to the culture war. I've made it very clear that I'm not in agreement with all the modern takes that suggest Western civilization is inherently evil, and that's the fault of being biased towards cis straight white men. I even made my fair share of videos where I joined in on the culture war, so I can understand if you think this video is a little hypocritical since I'm complaining about a system while participating in said system, but the reason for that is because I don't believe you win the game by simply not playing. At least not when people are saying you have to take a side or you're considered an enemy. I think if you just watch it go by, you're partially responsible when the side you don't like ends up winning. A big part of the reason I feel this way is because in the current culture war, a huge part of the reason it exists is because Hollywood has decided that everything must be political, or they believe catering to the people who feel that way is the best way to increase their sales. The problem I have with this, or rather the biggest problem because the culture war has given me a lot of headaches, is that through this lens, it becomes impossible to have an objective opinion on anything. Let's take The New Little Mermaid. And here comes the moment you've all been waiting for. I, Shady Durags, personally believe that making the live action version of Ariel to be black was a bad decision. <gasps> With that one statement, I have made at least 920 enemies for life. The immediate thought of a lot of people is, oh, he must be a raucous, because people don't know how to look at a man's profile picture. And once they see that calling me that would be stupid, the next logical conclusion is that I must think what I do because I've been swayed by someone else who is a raucous. All I did was give a critique, but because that critique involves skin color, people immediately assume the worst possibility as to why. Ha, this is where Shady dunks on the progressives just like I knew he would. Ah, oh, no you don't, other side of the argument. You're not getting away from this one scot-free. I and the rest of the internet have praised the crap out of Arcane and preached how it's one of the best cartoons ever made. Yet there are still people who look at the protagonist, see she's a pink-haired strong woman who's probably a lesbian and has daddy issues, and say to themselves, that's got woke written all over it. There's no way it's good, without ever giving it a chance. Still, I can't act like this isn't a 
mostly progressively pushed problem, at least in modern times. That's largely because almost all mainstream media leans left politically and has openly announced the need to project that into their works. It's insanely strange to see people calling me a raucous against my own kind because I have a difference in opinion about a movie decision of all things. 15 years ago, I could have critiqued Disney changing Ariel's skin color and people would have been willing to listen to my argument as to why, even if they disagreed with it. Nowadays, the politics immediately comes into play, regardless if there was any allusion to it. You know why I don't like Ariel's change in skin tone? It's not because I'm a raucous, it's not that I think these types of mermaids are unrealistic, and it's not even because I think black people should get their own original characters instead of hand-me-downs, though that is true. It's because when you get past all the nitty gritty, it's a distracting change that will take away from the experience. Disney isn't just making another version of The Little Mermaid. They're adapting their specific animated version, which stars a very well-known Caucasian redhead. They want me thinking of their animated version while I watch the live action version, but doing that while making their protagonist so drastically different takes me out of the experience. Imagine if the beast in the live action version of his movie looked like a giant frog or something. Sure, he'd still be a beast, but you'd be constantly asking yourself why such a change was made. When I see this person, I no longer see Ariel. I see someone playing Ariel. I am no longer immersed. You have reminded me that this piece of fiction is fictional. Regardless of how good an actress or singer this girl is, that is a distracting change. And guess what? You don't even have to cast another actor. Just change the character in makeup or in post. I never complain about Jessica Alba playing Sue Storm because while the actor was a different ethnicity, the character wasn't. But you can bet your shiniest penny that I was furious when I found out Michael B. Jordan was playing Johnny Storm. When Heimdall and Electro change races, yeah, it's different, but it's not distractingly different. Because of their roles and the target audience, those movies could get away with changing those specific characters. Come on, Shady, there are plenty of white princesses. How will little black girls be able to see themselves in Ariel if she doesn't look like them? Uh, the same way they did when the original came out? Personally, I will never understand the they have to look like me in order for me to relate to them mentality. Shoot, Static Shock is one of the blackest cartoons that ever blacked with so many black characters a plantation owner would salivate. And you know who I related to most in that show? Richie, the white kid, because he was a nerd. Lots of people see themselves in characters for their personalities. If you require skin tone to relate to someone, that's on you. And to those saying this outrage of race swapping only happens to white characters, need I remind you that everyone in their grandmother Willow had a fit when we found out that these two were supposed to be Sokka and Katara. Shoot, we still get mad over that one. Do I think Disney's live action version of The Little Mermaid is going to be bad because it has a black lead? No. I think it's going to be bad because Disney remakes tend to be bad. But the fact that they've started this journey by ignoring the consequences of drastically changing what the lead looks like from its very well-known source material is a sign that they've already gone down a predictably bad path. Ultimately, Hallie, Hale, or however you pronounce her name, is more than likely going to be used as a shield from criticism against the movie, as well as a superficial way to get those who care more about diversity than a good story into the box office seats. Because Modern Times has shown us that every time someone is screaming diversity about their work, that's how it winds up being. And the main takeaway from this is that no. I don't like the fact that the live action version of Ariel is black and good golly goodness do I wish I could make a critique like that without being given the least charitable interpretation as to why I think the way I do. But hey, now that she's not a redhead, maybe Ariel will actually be able to pull off that pink dress. This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. Advita saying. Goodbye.